Hello guys, welcome back to G2 Esports <laughs> Class Legends. This is the grand final. Please get it go away. Uh, this is the grand final between Life Coach and Zedalot. This is the climax of the whole weekend. We have seen so far 14 matches and we have one left. And this is for the grand prize and for the first title of the Class Legends uh, tournament because I'm hoping that we'll be having more of this kind of tournaments if you guys like the event, like the new format, because that's something we're trying out and maybe we'll actually catch on. Who knows, right? Well, uh, I, will be lo I would love to see opinions about it on Reddit, so don't hesitate, guys, to take your, to take your time and commentate on the rules. Uh, what do you think, Soto, about yeah. the tournament and the fact that we have Life Coach and Zettel in the final? Yeah, I mean, I've really enjoyed the tournament. There's been a lot of cool stories that have come out come out of it. Obviously, uh, Zealot's priest dominance, his priest mastery, all the the tech cards that we've seen. Crane kind of bringing that crazy Walker and Patron combo um, deck. But um, for sure, this is like an experimental format, as you say. So I'm sure there's some like little tweaks that you can do along the way to to kind of eliminate one or two of those matches that I think you've confessed as well. We did get a little bit stale of just the players queuing up the same deck over and over again. Yeah. You know, the five game Druid mirror that we saw of like Elki versus Life Coach, I think it was. Um, but that was so, the only one that happened like that. Yeah, right? it was, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely a few kinks that, that can be worked out, but overall I think it's a really exciting format, really interesting format. And uh, the final is going to be really interesting. Generally, I'd, I'd favor the Druid a little bit in this matchup, but um, mm -hmm. Zellot has already showed his ability to, to fight this matchup as the priest, and I think Zellot will definitely be motivated to take this tournament down. Firstly, just to get a big breakout tournament win, but also just because of the format that we talked about, I'm sure Zellot takes a lot of pride in his his priest mastery, and he wants to prove, right? That, like, if, if, if I only had to play priest in tournaments, I would win every tournament, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, so, that would actually be cool. Yeah, so um, I'm sure he's he's... Uh, ready, eager, and ready to um, to take this tournament down, and uh, I hope for his sake that he he puts in a good showing here. But life coach is is no slouch himself. Cool. Well, uh, we'll be starting soon with the decks, and um, I'm I'm curious which deck will Zetalot choose. I'm banking that he this will be the variant with the holy champions right yeah the thought steel holy champion deck seems to be the better option the thought steals you know can and cannot be good against druid but just having those extra minions like the holy mm -hmm, champions mm -hmm. and the the doctor boom that's in that deck as well is uh definitely a big deal against druid because you don't want to be just sitting back being reactive the whole game which is kind of what the other deck is exactly and um the death lords might be a problem though we saw the the that was already playing against one druid player which was Tice, also from g2 and we saw that Tice was kind of unfortunate with the rolls from the death lord because it picked three times a keeper of the grove right and that's the worst possible outcome apart from Dionysus aspirant yeah. uh, but the outcome of the game might be very different if the death lord picks up palter treader a Druid of the Claw, a Dr. Boom, a Emperor. Emperor. Yeah, yeah that, that, that would be disastrous, right? So the Death Lord might be either a blessing or just a disaster in disguise, right? And um, we'll see how that pans out. But um, hopefully we'll have an interesting final and grand final for the tournament. And um, again, thank you guys for watching. We had incredible incredible viewership i didn't suspect that we'll break those numbers that will break 20k people we have we had currently 26.5 so that's even more uh way more than i anticipated so thank you guys very much for the support and watching the tournament yep and just one final plug i guess before we get into grand finals if you do want to give us feedback on the tournament just talk about any plays any games that you thought were awesome or give uh lothar and the the g2 crew some feedback on this you can use the hashtag g2cl to get involved in the combination and possibly get your tweets shown on stream as well so last chance to get those in but now the the sellout is out of the way we can get into <laughs> game one and that is druid versus priest and so we have Zetalot with the opening hand, has the Nausea Cleric, has the Injured Blade Master with the Coin Flash Heal. Yeah, which could that's be amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the MVP of this game and in general of this match, I would say. Injured Blade Master is the, um, is the Twilight Drake without a downside because it can't be silenced by Keeper of the Grove. 
right? And you, you don't have to pass a few turns to get it up to a sizable uh, sizable stat line. You just play it out there and heal it up. So, you know, you're, you're fully capable of just tempoing out with a one drop and a two drop as well if you draw them. So, yeah, Injured Blade Master with a, with a healing card is just one of the most oppressive things you can do. And as we know, Druid, no hard removal in the deck. They don't play Mulch or Naturalize or any of that nonsense that's available mulch. to them. <laughs> mulch, yeah. Mulch, Ellie Giggle, literally. Um, so yeah, he does pick up the Chow here, but that, that's going to help him deal with these Living Roots quite nicely. And yeah, as you say, Blade Master going to come down very, very soon and be the MVP in this matchup. Well, we have, still have to wait 110 for it. Yep. And um, I'm guessing that, unfortunately for Zetalot, he will not be able to combo it out in 110 with the Cleric. I'm sure as hell he will, would like to play the Injured Blade Master with the Flash Shield next turn. And probably hope for the draws after that turn, right? Because he most likely will live that turn. And right. then when he will trade, he will heal up, he will draw cards, and that's how he will build the advantage in the whole match, in the whole yep. game, sorry. Yeah, uh, it be interesting to do, uh, see what Zetalot does with this turn here. He might choose to just play out the Nausea Cleric, just to encourage his opponent, not for example, to play that shade of Naxxramas that he just drew, but having now just wrapped for one and traded the board off, um, it's probably an easier proposition. Um, he can, yeah, play the Cleric here and it demands an answer right now or else the uh, Injured Blade Master Flash Heal combination is not only going to be uh, a huge value minion on the board, it's also going to draw him a card. Wow, I didn't anticipate that, to be honest. I thought that the Wrath would deal just to free damage and that's it. Right, that's that's the point I was about to make, where in that situation, if the two one ones on the board, maybe you still play out the Cleric to encourage the hit-hit hero power turn on turn three from the Druid, and then you can get your Blade Master down on an empty board without having to worry about something like Shade being in play. Yeah. Wow! But that's cool. That is cool. Um, Zedalot values killing the Shade over potential huge Blade Master. That's crazy. Um, I'm surprised that he values it that way because he does have double Light Bomb in his hand right now. So is he really too worried about how big that Shade gets? Interesting well, stuff. now it's a 5-drop, right? Yeah. It's a 5-mana Yeti. Yeah. That dies to execute, but he plays against Druid, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and, uh, it was a big factor in the semi-final, though, right? Sure. Yeah, it absolutely was. Um, so yeah, we'll probably see Keeper coming down this turn. No other great option. I don't really see the merit in like hero power while growth up to six mana. Six isn't really a, a great break point for Life Coach right here. So it's just a matter of uh, which target he wants to snipe down with the Keeper here. Also important just to get the Keeper of Grove into play um, early enough that Cabal Shadow Priest isn't a factor. Mm -hmm. So Keeper with the Grove to kill the uh, kill the Cleric right next turn. Azure Drake next turn. Probably Wild Growth. It's going to go for okay. the Wild Growth play. Okay, that, that's interesting too. Because um, we didn't see any buffs, right? No nope. villains chosen. The nope. only thing that is that lot seems to be playing is Power Watch Shield, if yep. I remember correctly. Correct. Um, but yeah, now he's kind of stuck. He may just be forced to uh, tempo out one of these Blade Masters as a 4-3, and that is what he's going to do. It's a little bit exposed to swipe now, but yeah, a little bit intrigued by the previous turn as to, oh my, like, why do I doubt this man anymore? <laughs> like, whenever I have a question of why does he want that much mana, the answer is obviously he's looked at the top of his deck and the top card is a card that costs that much mana. That, that is always the answer. Yeah. Holy crap. But right. do you play this in this situation? Um, because you can still go for the Keeper and kill the Injured Blade Master, which might be better. That's true, but the, you know, under normal conditions, the Blade Master can only be healed up to five health this turn anyway, which doesn't really help it deal with the Emperor. What to do? Hmm. Mm. Hard to say. Ah, he goes for it. I like this. Let's go for it. All right, interesting. I really like this. Because now he builds up the board. There's still far away from Cabal Shadow Priest. So you can pick up the value from the Keeper of the Grove right now. Hmm. Sure, makes sense. Yeah, this is the last turn he can safely use the Keeper without the threat of Cabal Shadow Priest coming down. Um, but yeah, it looks like this is just a... I don't know, he's going to go for the Thought Steel play. I was looking at just potentially playing the 5-mana the Yeti here, but... 
Uh, looks like Zealot is going to value keeping the board clear and just trade out this 2-4, but it does pass completely free initiative back to his opponent. And that is something that Leopard wanted to see. Right. Because now he plays the... I would say you play the Ember right now. Uh... I mean, you? He, oh, no, 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 no. Just, no, you no, just no. draw two more cards, right? Yeah, two, you're draw, no, 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 never mind, never mind. Those, those two more cards that you draw might just be Force of Nature and Savage Raw, and then you exactly. also bait out the Entomb or the Shadow of Death from your opponent, and then your Emperor is more protected on a following turn. So uh, I think the Ancient of Lore is a lot better this turn, but yeah, the, the passive play from Zetalok going into Priests, sorry, going into Druid's turn seven was a little bit weird there. You have the chance to just get a nice sizable minion on the board with the, the Injured Blade Master heal play and turn it down for a more passive option just to clear the board and have nothing on his own side. And passing initiative back to a Druid here on seven mana seems dangerous, but he does have those two light bombs. So if a Dr. Boom were to come down, it probably wouldn't be the end of the world for him. Well, he's thinking about the Emperor and he goes for it. Look at that. <laughs> I still think the Ancient of Lore is significantly better, but okay. But now you can play two four drops on the next turn. You can. And you push your opponent to, to to use the light bomb. That's that's actually very important. Because it's either Shadow Ward Death. If and and if it's not Shadow Ward Death, then it's Light Bomb and your opponent doesn't um doesn't uh, develop the board, right? Sure. I like that, to be honest. Uh, wow, so it turns out that Pilot Shredder is actually a better card for four mana than Druid of the Claw, which is a five drop. <laughs> like, that's what's just happened this turn. <laughs> Not really. I think it's about the role of the Druid of the Claw, because yeah, now it has the potential charge, right? Right. I mean, yeah, I, I was just memeing about Pilot Shredder for a bit, Lothar. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, I'm, I'm, just leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, obviously, Druid, <laughs> Druid of the Claw has uh, has some extra u utility from hand being able to charge, of course. But yeah, it's just funny seeing Pilot Shredder being played over a five drop for the same amount of mana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Swipe does deal with the Azure Drake, but you can't develop the board again unless you play the Injured Blade Master and Silk of Healing. Oh, he goes for this look of him to develop a 5-5 five, five and a 4-7. Yep, I uh, like this full tempo play. That is a, a ton of stats on the board for 7 mana. Mm -hmm. So he's just going to try and compete for the board the hard way here. Um, and Life Coach is going to have to come up with some sort of answer for this because he's nowhere near really threatening lethal yet. Only has the Force of Nature in his hand, Priest still sitting at 30 health. I um, guess you just draw cards and deal face damage and you ignore the minions. Ooh, there's the Savage Raw and a second Ancient of Law. All right, so Life Coach Silence now has a the, ton of cards to keep going. Silence the Holy Champion, deal eight damage to the face, have four minions on the board. Yep, seems good. Then you have 14, 18 damage, to potential 20 damage next turn. Huh, if you... No, that doesn't change anything. I'm not sure about this, because... Do you want to play the Keeper right into a potential Cabal Shadow Priest? If you do that, you know that your opponent will have two mana left, so he can use the this to heal a minion or himself. Yeah. And which one you... You, you have to think about which uh, option will your, will your opponent go for. And I would say he will... Oh, he's trading. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I guess this is fine. You don't really lose that much you know your shredder turns into a two drop but other than that you're in a pretty strong position uh you're a little bit more exposed to light bomb this way um forcing the the tray oh, actually it's the same thing because that trade probably would have happened in the light bomb situation anyway or the uh it would have traded into the two drop afterwards with the potential of healing so yeah this is a little bit better against light bomb to to take the the, the trading insurance um it looks like we may be seeing a light bomb come down here mm. Uh, oh, swipe, he has to swipe, yeah. Swipe trade into the 5-5. Five, five. Looks great here, too. Yeah. Maybe first fold steel? No, he's healing the... He's going to heal up the Blade Master. Hmm. Okay. Second National Blow will be crucial here. Wow. If he picks up a second Savage Roar, then he is able to double combo him. Yep. Or just play Dirt of the Claw this turn. Hmm. We'll see. 
Yeah, looks there are like a lot of options right now. There are, and it looks like he's going to go digging for some more options. Picks up a second innovate and a well, swipe. So that is a big old pile of damage he's got in his hand right now. He'll be able to play uh, combo plus Druid of the Claw, which is uh, kind of nuts, right? It is, but I don't think that's the way you want to play it this out. You want to swipe and sacrifice the Keeper before the Cattle Shadow Priest. And I yep. like that a lot. I like it. Um, we saw this play on a previous turn or in a previous game from Zethalot where he took a board clear and then just left a Keeper of the Grove. That was the only minion he didn't worry about clearing. And he was then able to Cabal Shadow Priest it on a following turn. And wow. Thought still into. He now has Doctor Boom and Double Savage Roar from his opponent's deck. So. No that, idea. There's, there's no way someone will play around that. No, it, it just, <laughs> just cannot be done. So Zalot has the ability to uh, get some some broke backing of himself going here with the with the Druid Priest meta going on. If he can get that Doctor Boom to stick on the board, that Double Savage Roar alone is going to be an enormous amount of damage. But he has to find a way to deal with this five five that's staring him down in the face first. So Light Bond. Yeah, I mean, Light Bomb seems reasonable. He's the the Druid deck is kind of running out of minions that get cleared by Light Bomb because um, the Drakes have gone. This is the second Ancient of Law. There is still a Doctor Boom, I think, that you have to deal Ooh. with. Yeah, that guy, that guy right there. Yeah, the guy that you just thought stole is a, as a stark reminder that he's still in the deck. So that Light Bomb probably is reserved for the Doctor Boom. Hmm. Well, but if you know that there's still Doctor Boom in the deck and yeah. you have Shadow Ward Death still in the deck too it's kind of like well you, your opponent might not even draw it because he played already two azure drakes and two engine of laws sure yeah but it seems to, to be working for him because i'm sure that life coach now will play the doctor boom yeah i mean what other possible plays does he have he can go for druid the claw plus aspirin that kind of thing but uh, I mean, it, it just doesn't look as powerful as the Dr. Boom, really, but it's, it depends on whether Life Coach has that read on the second Light Bomb or whether he, he feels like playing around the second Light Bomb just statistically after having already seen one. How likely is he to have the other? Uh, but we'll see what he comes up with here. Draw the claw in taunt mode and innovate. <sighs> now you don't want to overextend. I think it's just taunt mode and hero power. Gonna go charge. Charge? Well, he wants to force out a light bomb in this situation, right? Yeah, and I mean, with the combo in hand, this is also just threatening lethal very, very imminently. So, even the light bomb here doesn't clear out the Darnassus Aspirant. He'll have to find a different way to deal with it. And a light bomb will be forced to come down here, and I guess just the the Holy Champion will be developed alongside this. Try and get some pressure on the board. And if he can get this Holy Champion up to like a, a, a sizable, a decent size, which he has the the Flash Heal plus his Hero Power Heal and two Savage Roars, he may just be able to deal an enormous amount of damage just with this Holy Champion. Uh, but that will be used to clear up the Dr. Boom, I guess. It looks that way, yeah. So, I mean, how much damage would it be? You get buffed to 5, get buffed to 7, buffed to 9, buffed to 11, plus 4 from the face. So it's 15 damage next turn. Yeah, but I, I'm guessing that Life Code might actually just go for the combo this turn and innovate Wrath, deal with the Holy Champion with his face and the Wrath, sure. deal enormous amount of damage, have the yeah. board control still because it's the 2-1 minion, and then next turn you just play Dr. Boom and Hero Power, deal another damage. You still have one Druid of the Claw in the deck. Yeah, I like it. You deal 16 damage this turn. Yep, 16 damage, hit it with your face, wrap it down. Yeah, I like that play a lot. I would not be at all surprised if that's what ends up happening. Well, he might just go for the... So he's going to go for the Boom instead. He's seen both Light Bombs, so this is hard to deal with as well. But um, I don't think... I think there's a draw that lets him get lethal here, even though he's pretty close with the heals and the uh, the double savage draw. But... Circle of healing and no wait, there's... no no no. no Circle of healing would add another plus two. Holy Nova. <sighs> well, mm. seven draws are four damage each, and that's about it. Yep. No, no way. Yeah, it doesn't look great here. He may just have to defensively Holy Nova. So he can heal his own face, get the Holy Champion up to five, and then uh, use Holy Nova to, to clear out the, the Doctor Boom. What if the bombs will clear the Holy Champion? Uh, well, no, you can trade first, right? You just heal your own face. Oh, yeah, right. The Holy Champion is five, and then you can just trade it in. But then the bombs will hit face. Then the bombs will hit face. From, so it's either you take the risk yeah. 
and you might rescue yourself from the combo. Yeah. Or you take the risk and we will not kill the Dr. Boom. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you have the flash heal afterwards to be able to bounce your health Falcon back up. So I think the safe play is okay, but Zelo's gonna risk it, gets away with it. The the Holy Champion is still yeah. green, so still, still able to attack. One yeah. death, oh, Sucks Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes it is, but yeah, the Holy Champion soaking up one damage there might be relevant. And I guess kind of importantly, it allows him to hold on to the uh, flash heal here because he may, I think he still has both Orcanai Soul Priests in his deck. Ooh, and the big game hunter is in the wrong place. It is. Uh, do you think there's any turn, chance? Get that. Any chance he wraths his own big game hunter here? Uh, I'm thinking about it. Probably will will actually happen. Because if you get a droid of the claw, that's what you need. Yep. Uh, or even like second savage roar is just fantastic for next turn, right? So you you only have it's a downside. I mean, it's a bad situation if your opponent has an, another pyromancer. Sure. Shade is great. That's Shade awesome. Shade is awesome. You just yeah. saw one uh, one Holy Nova. Two but... Light Bonds gone as well. So maybe you don't want to play it. Because your opponent has to deal with the with the big game hunter this turn. If you, if he has if he has the Pyromancer, then he will most likely deal with the Shade Nox Shade Noxamus as well. No and then if he does that, then you can try to kill the Pyromancer next turn. And you will play the shade, and your opponent will probably not have the option to kill it, and then you finish up the game. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I can buy that, but like by not playing the shade, you're opening up options like flash heal, like uh, just a card true heart, for example, can pull him out of range. Uh, okay, that's yeah. that's a good good thing to notice. Yeah, so I, I think I like playing the shade here, and the 26 health, is that enough? There's going to be 7 14. plus 14, so he's dead to the Innovate Hero Power. Oh my god. He's dead to the Innovate Hero Power? Oh, Zellot is going to feel pretty awful about this. Yep, he will. Look at his face. Will there be any reaction? He's waiting, he's waiting. He's thinking, oh, this is one off, this is one off, I'm fine. Nope, there's the Innovate. Whoopsie. Innovate breaks the game. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 1-0 for Life Coach, but when you think about the matchup, you see that it's not clearly favoring the Druid, right? Unless you get super explosive start, the Priest might be actually favored if he has his own Injured Blade Master, a Death Lord that will soak up the damage, and get healed, uh, and will get healed every single turn. Power, maybe power shielded, and yeah, can happen. Right. Was the Doctor Boom um, thought stolen? Uh, yeah. Well, he's, he thought stole Doctor Boom and Savage Roar, but this yeah. is the deck that has a natural Doctor Boom in it, I believe. The the Holy Champion build. Hmm. So yeah, Life Coach uh, picks up an Innovate in his opening hand. Zealot does have the Zombie Chow, but also gets a Death Lord, which we've we've talked about earlier is not really ideal to have early against a, a mid-range Druid. Very effective against an aggro Druid, but mid-range Druid just kind of gets their Shredder down and then a Druid of the Claw or something like that, and Shade, or shade Next Rammers followed by um, Pilot Shredder, and the, the Death Lord just kind of gets chewed up too quickly, especially when you're not playing um, Velen's Chosen in your deck. Yep. Well, the Innovate is again the opening hand. Very important. Yep. Uh, definitely one of the cards you want to have as a Druid, but a Life Coach is, as always, taking his time, but I'm sure there's not a serious consideration to Innovate Big Game Hunter this turn. Like... No, 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 no way. He just saw... I mean, he, sh he should notice that it was Fault Stolen, right? The, the Dr. Boom, but I'm sure that Ty's also informed uh, Life Coach about... Um... About the Doctor Boom in the, in the game that he had, right? Yeah. Against that a lot. Yeah. But it was needed to play the um uh, to play the Doctor Boom. Uh, sorry, to play the big game hunter on board last time in the, in the previous game. Right. Thought still comes out here. He again does have that big uh, Blade Master flash heal play if he wants it, but. A little way off doing that. He's going to have to find something to occupy the board with this turn. Can play out a uh, wild pyromancer if he wants to. 
And it looks like he's just going to coin the Death Lord straight away. And this is something we've talked about. It's a little dangerous because he's just immediately facing down four damage from that Pilot Treader. No real answer from a Druid on three mana would be able to take this out. Um, well, I guess Wrath Living Roots, right, would actually take it out. But, you know, no realistic option is able to deal with it straight away. But it's just so much damage that you're able to put on it immediately. Yep. But now how do you deal with that? <laughs> you are one mana short for the swipe. Yeah. This is something that um, Tice had a problem with, because he could have, uh, he could have um, used the swipe to kill the Death Lord immediately. He mm. didn't do it, and then was immediately punished by the Silk of Healing. Yes. If if Zetalot will top take the Silk of Healing right now, I assume this matchup, this game will already go for for Zetalot in Zetalot's favor. It's such a swing in the board momentum that that just is back breaking for the Druid. Right. But he is just going to have to work out what to do this turn. He has whether or not to attack, whether he wants to play a big game hunter, or all sorts of things. And the big game hunter is just going to trade with the zombie chow here. So he's going to play it out just to try and protect that half of his shredder. But not a great deal of value from his big game hunter here. It ends up just trading with a one drop. So, Yep. Is he going to pyromancer flash heal on the death lord here just to keep it out of range? Pops yeah, that was mana storm. Pops open the pilot shredder. We have seen the odd millhouse, but uh, Steam Weedle Sniper not quite as impressive. No, you can throw the armor at a minion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, don't think that's going to be having too much of an impact anytime soon, Lothar. But importantly, the fact that it's a 2 3 and not a 3 2 means that the swipe is not good enough to deal with the, uh, the yeah. Deathlord here. And <laughs> look at this is so awkward. You can't play Shade. Your opponent has four mana and a pyromancer on board. Wait, yep. actually you can, because the only combination that works with this is Power Ward Shield and Power Ward Shield and Flash Shield that you just saw. I mean Power Shield Thought Steel would work as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about other cards that are not in his hand that right. could work with this combo. So he might actually risk the Shadow of Next Ramas this time. Um, or like Circle of Healing first plus something would work as well. Okay, good point. Yeah. Time waits for no one. Hmm. Yeah, Life Coach is, is definitely a little bit fearful of dropping that shade onto the board because of the Wild Pyromancer, but I mean, when the alternative is just passing the initiative back to your opponent who already has a sizable board with a Death Lord in yeah. play, I think you just have to take the risk and, and drop the shade here. That's very needed. I agree. Sorry, I have to... Cat, get the cat out of my lab. <laughs> um, so going back here, we now have two Blade Masters in hand, but he's used his healing cards on the previous turn, so he's just going to have to tempo one out here as a 4-3, hope mm -hmm. that there isn't a Wrath in his opponent's hand, or if there is a Wrath, that it at least uh, disrupts his turn enough to be worth it. Yeah. Well, you can get the drop from the swipe, and you know that you only have one Keeper of the Grove left in your deck. Uh, you can do that, but then, of course, you end up leaving the Blade Master alive, so he's able to heal up the Blade Master and start getting value out of that. So it's actually kind of a tricky decision here as to which one he wants to swipe. Well, you you can't really play Azure Drake in this situation, so, so it has to be swipe. Yeah, but you could swipe the Blade Master, right, and just mm -hmm, leave the Death Lord there for now. And kill it next turn, because you have free damage next turn in the form of Keeper of the Grove and the Hero Power. Yeah. So that's seven potential damage. One from the, sw uh, the swipe this turn, so the death will be at eight if we'll get healed. Yeah, but which is an issue. But the swing oh, no. from having a zero mana cost minion before Light Bomb might be... Oh my god! It is. Life Coach is just a god, confirmed. Um, yeah, I mean, I agree with this play here. I think it does end up being slightly better to... To take so out the Death Lord. Especially before turn 6, right? Yeah, before turn 6 is huge. Um, and he's going to have to heal up the um, the Blade Master here, trade into the Shade, but he has no answer to that Emperor, so the Emperor is going to start getting repeated value, and he even has the Azure Drake here to cycle, pick up another card. Mm, I don't think that's actually turn when you play Azure Drake. Keeper of the Grove, kill the Azure Drake, uh, sorry, kill the Injured Blade Master. Yeah. And just deal six damage to the Death Lord. Might not even, not even attack. No, you want to attack. You want to attack yeah. because the, the the light bomb next turn might be a problem, That's and true. you don't want to play Azure Drake into the light bomb as well as the Emperor. 
Yeah, my, my concern with the Keeper of the Grove is the thing that we've talked about a lot, is you're playing it directly into a, a turn 6 Cabal, but if you get your Keeper of the Grove Cabal, that's another turn that your Emperor isn't dying, so yeah. I imagine you're probably fine with that. And it's just better to have your creature cabal than both of your creature light bombed. Yeah, agreed. Um, so, yeah, it looks like Keeper is going to come down. Wow, is it Keeper to silence? He plays See? around... Um... The death oh, he's just, gonna... I just... <laughs> okay. I wanted to say he plays like around a... light bomb, but he actually nope. just no, goes ham. <laughs> yeah. Love it. He's just gonna Maybe go before the shredder placement. Oh. Okay. Okay. So he has literally just pulled out like the two biggest things in his deck, right? The oh, the life on top deck. That's a huge draw. That's a lot. Brief draw confirmed. Well. Luck and luck, right? Both both players were pretty lucky with the outcomes. Yeah, can't argue with that. But, but now Life Coach has the option to be in, like, to be on the play, right? right. Because he has the advantage of, of having the initiative. He will play the Azure Drake. He might get a Pilot Shredder that will be played instead of the Shade of Naxxramas this turn. Because he doesn't want to be um, in range of Holy Nova, I guess. Because that might be the play this turn. Because I guess Zetalot turn 7, if it's not Dr. Boom, will be kind of sad, right? Yeah, so he's going to go for the Drake, picks up a Wrath, he's going to develop the Shade alongside this. So keeping the, the Sludge Belcher for a little bit later, which is interesting. Air Power to face, takes the Priest to 28, not particularly important. The Priest will probably find a turn to restore that 2 health at some point, because uh, they're, they're very uh, notorious for not using all of their mana in the later game turns. Yep. Oh, look at that. Holy Nova. Yep. Is yes. it the turn when you will use it? There was already one Pyromancer used, so you can't really rely on a second one. Yeah, I guess you have to. Like, it's sad because you want to be able to use it with that Blade Master, but the shade coming down this turn kind of rushes it, rushes him to have, will have, be able to play it. But he chooses not to. Goes with the Thought Steal, trying to pick up some sort of answer, some sort of uh, proactive minion to play. Doesn't get it. Yep. <laughs> I mean, Savage Raw Living Roots do combine together here to take out that Azir Drake, but definitely not the play he was looking for. So, be interested to see where he goes with this turn from here. By, by the way, that's like the third Savage Roar that he got in general it is, from yeah. the Thought Steals. Yeah, so far 100% success rate on hitting Savage Roar with Thought Steal. Well, this doesn't look good. Looks like he is going to go to take out the Drake with the two Thought Stolen cards, so just going to try and limit the pressure on the board for now. Um, and yeah, that, that Blade Master Holy Nova combination does start to become a thing, but the Shade is going to grow out of reach a bit this turn, so he's, he's in a little bit of trouble here. That that Shade might just be able to sit on the board and grow unless a, a second Light Bomb is drawn. You think it will just sit on the board? Because I, I, I would just attack with it. Cause it... I'm, a, like, I, this, I'm a big fan of attacking with Shades, but um, I guess yeah, like, you haven't seen really anything that interacts with Shade Max Ramos from this deck yet. So I guess Light Bomb is the only thing that threatens it at this point from an empty board. So yeah, maybe you do just reveal it right now. There's no Shadow Ward Pain. We didn't see any, right? No. Not sure if Life Coach has that knowledge. But I guess when you see that your opponent's playing heavy, he um, minion heavy deck when it comes to a priest, right? So Holy Champions, Pyromancers, and then you have the cards to combo that around Clerics. So Flash Heals and uh, Fold Steals and cards like that. <laughs> then you probably just want to attack with the Shade as soon as possible because there's little to none interaction from the Priest side apart from the Light Bones that you mentioned. Yeah, exactly. So Life Coach tends to agree with you here, goes ahead and gets the three damage in, drops the Sludge Belcher over the Druid of the Claw, pretty much for the reasons that we've discussed before. Like Druid of the Claw is just so much more flexible in the hand, can be used to charge out in a later turn. So not surprised to see that, and yeah, um, Zetalot again is just one manner off a play that he probably wants to make, which is the... Oh the... my god! Wow. Oh, this wow. is unlucky. Those fault seals are not... Like, that, this is not something that Zetalot wanted to see at all. Nope. But he does have the knowledge, at least, that the opponent doesn't have combo in hand, because he stole both copies of Force of Nature. So... Well, at least the, the Force of Nature, right? The Savage Rolls right. are a bigger problem right now, because it's the same damage. Right now. Right. And for but, less, I mean, for less mana. 
Yeah, he's going into turn 9 from his opponent, though. So unless the Force of Nature was top decked this turn, he knows that the combo isn't, like, the full combo isn't in hand threatening to kill him. So he knows he has a little bit of time at least, but... Yeah, that, that time is uh, very quickly evaporating, and he does have access, of course, to the Druid of the Claw Savage Roar option, which, uh, how much damage is that? It's 3, 7, 11, plus 8. It's 19. He's one damage off lethal. Nothing new. Yep. Force and Alagagal. <laughs> yeah, it's one damage or one mana off lethal. One mana off getting the hero power in. Wait, have I counted this time? Is he just going in? He is going in. He didn't see the light bomb, so... Wait, he's not. What's going on? Oh, I think he's going to Wrath and then Savage Roar and use his face to deal the last two damage to the Blade Master and then just deal the rest what? of the damage to face. Okay. Uh, wait, no, he can't. He has not enough mana for that. He just miscounted wait. mana, right? Yeah, he must have done. Weird. So is he going to trade the Sludge Voucher or what's happening? No? He just missed the attack. No, 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 no. What What just happened? That was, that was terrible. Yeah. Oh, he's tilting. Look at, look at the life coach. Yep. That, that play was so weird, it confused me for a second. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, he's just going to wrath it and then Savage Roar. I was like, no, you don't have enough mana for that. So that's the second time we've seen, like, a really weird play from Life Coach. It was just, like, outright just, like, failing to evaluate the state of the board properly. Well, it will. he will not be punished because there was no Light Bomb drawn from the top of the deck again for, for Zettelot. But that could have ended badly for him. Because yeah, his really hand, the wild group, the single wild group, will, will of course cycle through the deck, but unless he would have get a force of nature, the, that, that that hand would have been clunky as hell. Oh wow, he's gonna play the top deck keeper as well. Damn, oh look at God. this. Look at this. <laughs> That's life coach, I don't know. Yeah, life coach is like, okay, I mean, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on tilt here. I've tilted myself, so I have, to make, <laughs> I have to make sure that I tilt my opponent as well so that we're even. Okay, Life Coach takes the lead, 2-0 against Zettel Priest, and, uh, well, he's laughing now. <laughs> he has to feel silly about, silly about it, right? Um, this might this is, this is might be the last game between Zettel and Life Coach. Uh, it, it, it's the match point Zettel needs to turn the tables around. He needs that explosive start, so he needs Injured Blade Master, Circle of Healings, and Wolf Clerics, most likely. Does have the coin, so that flash heal can potentially be used with the Blade Master as well if he picks one up. But we see the wild growth in Life Coach's hands, so he's going to be off to a pretty solid start as well, as long as he can pick up some minions. Does get the Blade Master, but he mulligans away the flash heal to do it. So he's now going to be looking for, like you said, that circle of healing to be able to get this Blade Master in play as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Do you keep the Ash on the floor? I don't think so. You have the wild growth, but you have no coin. It's very important to have the Ancient of the Raw in general in every single match, because you, yep. you you rely on it so much. But at the same time, I think if you're on the play and not on the draw, you have to mulligan it away. If you're on the play, uh, on the draw, then you can keep the Wild Grove and the Ancient of the Raw. Oh, never mind. Yeah, well, you got the second one back anyway, so... Yep. Wild growth, but not a lot, a lot else going on in his hand for a while. He's going to want to pick up a 3-drop or a 4-drop to be able to play after the wild growth turn. Um, nah, that'll do. Not perfect. Doesn't get the perfect shredder, but Shredder Next Ramus will do to play on the following turn. He can curve straight into Sludge Belcher. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, Zombie Chow. Zombie Chow's not bad. Yeah. I mean, is there any... Do you need to have 3 power on board? If you're going to play a minion this turn, the question is, like, does it have to be Wild Pyromancer? Is there any reason why you'd rather have 3 power than 2 well, right now? The only reason is to um, trade, into, trade a shredder. into the Shredder, and that's yeah. it. And even then, like, that's not exactly great for you, right? So I can definitely understand the keeping the Pyromancer in hand for more value, especially while you have the coin. So Powered Shield pickup here will allow him to um, eliminate the Shade. Doesn't get it, just picks up a second Pyromancer. So he's just going to tempo out the Blade Master, and I think we've seen a 4-3 Blade Master be played in every game so far, just as a, a necessity of getting something on the board against Druid. Hmm. Dr. Boom. Well, uh, you, I guess you have to trade with the, with the Injured Blade Master. Uh, if he value trades into the zombie chow here, which he it looks will get like, punished. yeah, he's going to get punished really hard by the uh, wild pyromancer coin that we see in hand. Um, but you know, they're like on the surface of it, this doesn't look like a bad play. But but we know that 
this deck supports Silk of Healings and Flash Heals. And this can be so this injured, injured blood master can be so easily abused. Ooh. Well, this this makes it really good for uh, for the develop. So coin first, um, pyromancer, power shield on the injured blade master, attack into Belcher, kill the injured blade master. Yep, that is for sure one way of doing it. He may just be considering holding onto the coin though, since he has a bunch of essentially six mana plays in his hand. Like the the Justicar is a six mana play, and Orkney Hero Power is also a six mana play. But looks like he is going to go ahead and coin here just to get the the maximum efficient turn as you described, Lofar. Pretty sure that the Power Shield will happen as you described. It's just a matter of which minion he decides to heal here. But I think I would go with the Blade Master for sure. It's the MVP in this matchup. If if the injured Blade Master doesn't die, then you, it presents your ultimate value in the right. matchup. Yeah. So three health and one health on the board. That Wrath is a nice draw. Otherwise, he was probably looking at having to Force of Nature this turn. Is it he so might, bad to just use say, the Force of Nature? Yeah, he might do it anyway just to be more mana efficient and have the, the Wrath as a, as a backup later. Just clear the board this turn and look to, to follow up with the seven drop afterwards. Um, either way, Wrath, Hero Power, Force of Nature, they pretty much achieve the same thing. It's just which of those cards he'd rather have in his hand in future. Yep, agree. I would say it's a force of nature then, because it can be you can draw and innovate over the course of the game, which can be then abused with the wrath, right? Yeah. And the tempo swing against priest, which build is building a board control with his minion heavy deck, might be very important. Yeah, I like it. I think force of nature ends up being the right decision here. Uh, trades all three of the trees in, keeps his one two on board, which is a, a tiny bit of board presence at least, and he's going to hope that there isn't too much of a, of a minion heavy turn coming down here and he can just play a, a comfortable dr boom on the previous turn on the following turn or an ancient of all and there's an innovate there is an innovate but you can't hmm, you can't trade yeah the wrath doesn't have any effect this turn so unless he wants to force of nature again it looks like it's just a boom turn yep dr boom does come down leaving out the holy champion always a little bit scary but some some miracles are going to have to happen here for it to do anything uh too impactful i think we're May just see a light bomb. Oh, Ooh. light bomb traits one for one with Dr. Boom. What a card, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it costs at least six mana <laughs> yep. and not seven. So that's something. And the Holy Champion does. Fortunately, for was that a lot? That was an important thing to, to have still on the board. But now we'll see the ultimate value. Oh, can I into Flesh Heal, which was. MVP against Ties. Yes, absolutely. Um, generally, it was used more for just direct burst purposes here, but you know this is a tempo-focused matchup, so the Orcanite Flash here was going to serve its purpose here to, to just grab the tempo back from Zeta lot after he lost it on that turn, having to spend his whole turn to deal with the Doctor Boom, giving the free initiative back to Life Coach. Now he has the opportunity to pick that up again with the Orcanite Flash Heal. Yep. Um... Uh... Hmm. But for Life Coach now, does he leave that on board? He can't really leave the Alcani on board. Yeah, it seems too dangerous to just leave it there. It's going to have too much of an effect on the minions that you play from now on, especially since you don't have any of the big, beefy minions that you want to see. You just kind of have these uh, these small 2-3s and, and Keeper of the Groves. The Shade is a nice draw, but... I think you have to address that orc and I here. Um, Keeper of the it's Grove and Wrath looks like the best way to do it. Why just not combo this turn? Combo to clear? Yeah. Hmm. You don't have... I mean, I, I don't mind combo to clear as a Druid player, but generally you want to see something like uh, Ancient of Lore or, um, you know, Azure Drake's Druid of the Claws, like big, beefy minions that you can take the board with afterwards. He doesn't really have that right now. He just has, like, more reactive stuff and a shade. So... I don't know. I think I think I'd like to hold on to the combo here, especially since you have a chance to develop the shade this turn, which mm -hmm. benefits from from having the combo in hand. Okay, if he goes for the combo, that's way too late. So he he needs to switch. The, <laughs> he needs to switch the strategy. Wow! It looks like he's going to leave up the Orcanai and value taking out the uh, the Pyromancer instead, and this opens oh up god. a lot of potential. Oh my god! That is such an over overextended board. 
I mean, obviously we see the, the Circle of Healing in hand, but, you know, there's two copies of this card in the deck. It's it's worth playing around, and even something like the, the second Flash Heal can punish you really hard here. Just a card True Heart can punish you really hard here. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Zealot has two of these punishes available to him. He can pick and choose which one he wants to go for, but I imagine we'll see the one that just immediately deals with the Shadow Knacks Ramos. Yeah, I would favor that too. I would definitely favor that. And it's it's uh, seven damage to the face as well this turn. No, wait. Deathlord? Okay. Yeah, Deathlord. He wants to protect the Orc Knight from the hero power, right? So I think this makes a lot of sense. Do you see the Wrath in uh, Life Coach's hand, which is able to deal with it anyway. Um, but yeah, I think protecting the, the Orc Knight from the Druid hero power is the right plan here. For I sure. just wanted to say that this is the turn when you combo, but the Emperor draw just changed the logic in this turn, I think. Because you... Oh. Nah, you still play Emperor. Yeah, I think so. But you might um you might use the wrath for draw this turn as well. What do you think? Just to get the um the the discount on a potential savage roar? Mm -hmm. Would that change anything? Seven nine It might change something. But maybe you the wrath for one mana will be more valuable anyway. Hero power for the death lord to, to one damage also will change a lot. Because if you get an Azure Drake next turn, then you can use a wrath for two damage to clean up the um the death lord. Unless it gets healed, of course. But then it means your opponent will be at seven mana, not on nine. Yep. Um, so Zealot has to take the choice here whether he wants to entomb this Emperor or play his own Dr. Boom. Looks like he's going to go for the aggressive play with the Boom. Um, might end up costing him because that combo is going to get extremely cheap, but there's nothing really in hand for for um, Life Coach to be able to deal with this ball proactively. He might just have to do that defensive combo that you've been talking about for a while. He can, uh, if he Force of Nature Savage Roars, he can send the Emperor plus his face into the Death Lord and then send two trees into the Boom. Doesn't seem too bad. That's true. Well, this is the second taunt, right? There was one Death Lord already played this. No, no, no. That, that's the first one, Death Lord. That's the first Death Lord this game. Is it? Uh, I'm not sure. Eh, there's been a lot of priest games today. I'm not. Wait, was sure. it? Was it with? Uh, was the Doctor Boom played this game? Or was that the previous game? That was the previous game. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Emperor and the Doctor Boom. Yeah, yeah, Like yeah. the two Death Lords in the same game, yeah. So he's going to wrap for one here. Picks up the Wild Growth. He can do this and still have enough mana left to uh, Force of Nature Savage Roar, but he's he's roping again. He's running out of time, and we've seen Life Coach scramble and make a couple oh! of pretty unfortunate plays. Big Game Hunter is picked up, though. That is enormous. Wow. That is insane. And he will silence the death lord as well i think so yeah silencing the death lord is no no he's gonna kill it he's gonna kill it is he gonna kill it oh he's gonna kill it you're right yeah i thought he's going for for the maximum damage this turn yeah to the face to finish up his opponent next turn but it doesn't look that way so now light bomb or bust hmm. That's well still bomb. still still the bombs might do a miracle here yep because there's a new azure drake on the block and it's now named Druids of the Glow with a unknown artwork on the board. <laughs> and that um, usually gets killed by the bomb, right? It does, yeah. So he's going to go ahead and entomb the Emperor first. Wait, um, why wouldn't you take the Druid of the Glow? Because that's what I was going to say. I think I would have favored like trading the Boombots into the, um, the Big Game Hunter first. And then potentially, since the Emperor is only at three health, it's more likely to die than the Druid of the Claw. Exactly. And that's and it. If you end up uh, entombing the Druid of the Claw, you do have an extra taunt in your deck, of course. And yeah, uh, is that 6 plus 14 plus 4, 24 plus the swipe, 28? Yeah. Seems good. Seems good. Let's do it. It's 9 mana. <laughs> Are we correct? Let's count it again. 6, 14, 8, yeah, 20, 24. Yeah, it's exactly 28. Life Coach <laughs> takes a clean sweep final, grand finals of G2 Esports Class Legends. It's actually a player from G2 Esports, so, you know, I'm happy. <laughs> but <laughs> but what, that was kind of, I was hoping for Zettelop to make it at least a, 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 
a fight, a 3-2 finals, you know? That is what I wanted to see because Zedard was the player I was looking up to in this tournament. It was really interesting uh, to see the, the Priest having an impact in yep. competitive environment, right? And that was... I was amazing to see this. this is the first time I actually had that situation. Congratulations to Life Coach, of course. Congratulations to Zetalot. We have the champion, we have the second place. They both earned it. I think the, 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 the most entertaining games were also from those players, right? Between, yeah. between so. Zetalot and his opponents and Life Coach and his opponents. They both had some hilarious situations and, um, and, and just ridiculous rng right with the yeah. top decks and <laughs> interesting uh the, yeah that's about it how did uh, you have anything to say subtle yeah i mean i guess the lesson here is you can play any format you like you just can't escape druid um that's <laughs> basically what you, you know you play regular hearthstone you just run into druid combo you play standard format in cursed trials you just run into druid combo you play single class <laughs> format you run into <laughs> druid combo. That's what happens. Yeah. Blizzard, if there's a lesson in this for any of you, I hope you see it. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I've just had an awesome tournament. Um, blast casting with you, as always, Lothar. We've seen some some sick games. Uh, the Raging Worgen Warrior is a personal highlight for me, as well as, mm -hmm. as we've mentioned. Uh, Zealot's first series, if you didn't catch that, the first series on the very first day, go back and watch that in the in the board. Um, yeah, against Dan Sivka, that yeah, was it's... the most interesting game of the tournament. Yeah, that was really, really awesome. We kicked things off with a bang, had a really awesome set first up. But yeah, I mean, I, I love being here. I hope you guys keep experimenting with, uh, with new formats, not just you guys, but everyone else as well. So thanks for having me, Lothar. Um, thanks, Twitch chat, for putting up with me. Uh, hopefully I didn't get <laughs> sapped too many times. I'm sure I got sapped occasionally, but hopefully I'm still here just about. Um, uh... Yeah, yeah that's me. just what just what what I wanted to add is that it's a versa. I'm, it's a pleasure to cast with you, Sothel. I love how we have the dynamics between discussing the plays. We, we kind of have similar mind, um, minds when it comes to analyzing the game. I think. Right. Um, so ho hopefully we'll have more of this of those tournaments from G2 Esports in the future. And so be sure to follow the channel, and we'll be of course posting. Uh, information on our website g2esports.com uh, important announcements also we'll be posting every single deck list from the tournament uh, on our website with some infographics with some commentary from the players nice. as well so be prepared for that and um, we'll be posting on, on our twitters and social medias from me from subtle i guess that's it from the production crew which i think was Everything was neatly done, 60 FPS, full HD, no problems with delays and stuff, no lags as well. Awesome. Yep. Awesome experience to, to watch a tournament without any problem, technical problems. And uh, from us here at G2 Esports, thank you guys for watching and being with us here for the past two days. So see you around. See you next time from me and Soto.